Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone. We are finally at our last session of the day of TPM X My Drone Tech Festival 2020. And I think a lot of people are waiting for this session because we've got really great speakers with us today. And before I go further, I would like to share a little bit about uh, our current, uh, to give some context to our discussion today, you know, uh, because Malaysia now has, uh, based on the, the Drone Industry Insight report you know, that, that I've shared earlier, you know, 384 million in 2025. So that is the basis of our discussion, how we can make sure Malaysia achieve that potential. And together with us, in this discussion topic, a building drone tech ecosystem in Malaysia. I have Ismay Yamin, CEO and CTO of Palsa UAV Senyam Rahat. Ismay, how are you? Oh, hi, uh, thank you. Good, good. Haven't seen you face-to-face uh, -face for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I think we should, we should catch up. Yeah, and we also have Izwan Zainal Abidin, the Managing Director and CEO of Terra Drone Technology Malaysia Senyam Rahat. How are you, Izwan? Alhamdulillah, Assalamualaikum and a very good day to all. Where, where are you in right now? Uh, in our office, TPM. All right, so they are coming in live from TPM and we are here live from uh, Daman Mall, USJ, STEM for all maker space in USJ. And together with me, uh, the president of MUDAS, Datuk Brigadier General Besara Haji Muhammad Nazri bin Dasha. How are you, Datuk? Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much. Uh, for having this opportunity, these sessions. Thank you for inviting me. All right. I think let's go and dive right into the discussion and topic of the day. Because I think we have more or less 30 to 40 minutes, uh, but the discussion and topic is quite heavy. Let's see how we can drill down these two gentlemen, because they have been building you know, and supporting drone companies for the past 10 to 15 years in Malaysia as well as globally. So I'm going to start with Ismail. So Ismail has been building his drone company, his aerospace company in Malaysia and bringing it to a global stage. Now, how was it building an innovative drone and technology company in Malaysia? How, how has it been and what has improved based on your perspective? Uh, okay, assalamualaikum and a very good evening to everyone. Thank you for having us here, Palsa UAV. Um, okay, uh, in terms of the building this innovative technology in Malaysia, it has not been easy when we started. But Alhamdulillah, across the years, uh, things have got better with uh, supply chain vendors that are equally capable in terms of uh, the offerings. Um, so as well as the universities, uh, the research institutions, uh, they have been accommodating in terms of uh, uh, us conducting some uh, categorization tests and validation as well. Uh, there are a lot of uh, governmental agencies that have been supporting uh, and understanding the nature of the technology. Uh, so a lot of things have matured across the years. So we, we have started as a special interest group uh, when I was studying in the uni. Uh, it's a local uni. So uh, we've been building uh, our technology around a core uh, future tech that we believe uh, that one day will actually make a change in the world. And that is hydrogen fuel cell. So we've been making a lot of hydrogen vehicles, transportations, uh, mainly uh, cars and drones uh, since 2008. Uh, so we managed to fly our first hydrogen powered drone in Southeast Asia in 2009. Uh, and then fast forward 2017, we managed to build the second generation of hydrogen fuel cell drone that uh, can fly for three to four hours. Uh, now we are having our third generation hydrogen fuel cell drone uh, that is using nanotechnology. Uh, with onboard hydrogen generation that can fly up to 13 hours. So uh, with this development, uh, actually our core focus has never been uh, just developing the drone per se, but more of a core technology in terms of uh, propulsion and endurance. So this whole process create a unique value proposition for our Malaysian made product mm -hmm. uh, that has a very high value and high impact for our global market. So we are very much looking forward to work with our local drone ecosystem companies that have been uh, reaching out globally. Um, Terra Drone is one of them, uh, Aerodyne uh, and other drone companies. So probably we can work together in uh, supplying them Malaysian-made drones with a very unique uh, selling point, which is the high endurance uh, powered flight. 
So that's uh, generally what we do and how we see uh, things that have been happening over here in Malaysia. Got it, got it. Thank you so much, uh, Izmir, for, for your sharing. And I, I want to go and, and, and maybe uh, get Datu to also share, you know, because I think MUDAS has been around for quite some time. You know, how can MUDAS, you know, assist uh, aspiring drone companies building technologies just like Izmir? You know, how can MUDAS help the, the drone ecosystem in terms of uh, getting connectivity or or you know, getting in touch with other drone companies to help build those technology together. Yeah, thank you. Uh, in the first place, so I, I'm I'm so excited when when I came to know uh, some of those drones company has some uh, success stories. Mm -hmm. So we we heard just now. Now, uh, as new does, uh, we are more uh, towards doing our activities for the public interest and for the national interest, contributing and helping. But in a way uh, of us to help the DIP or drone industry players, uh, we are more engaging on uh, new small medium, small and medium uh, drone industry players in terms of developing uh, of their, 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 their business. Right, in, in the way that we try to help them to come up with the right business model as a new company, mm -hmm. as a new company. But in a way that um, I think we have to start, for example, now you want to build something, an ecosystem in the major topics that we are discussing now. Uh, if you want to build something, you have to build, looking into an analogy of you want to build a building, for example, you must have an architecture plan, right? And sometimes when we look at those, those drone companies, they are focusing more towards something and energy engineering plan, mm -hmm. right? More on the operational perspective, procedures, right? looking into uh, processes and whatnot. Got it, got it. Right? But now what we, we are actually looking into that we, that we should focus upon is at the strategic level. Understood. Strategic understood. perspective. Understood. Now, um, with our, our humble experience, the MUDAS, uh, if I can quote some of our experience, uh, when we had some overseas trips uh, to China and also to Australia, now we realized that some of those companies, uh, within five years, six years, uh, they have significant achievements. Or uh, maybe I can start something looking at something uh, which is highly established like uh, um, military because my, my background is military. Mm -hmm. It's just like US military. Mm -hmm. They have something like a roadmap, mm -hmm. right? Started in 2005, mm -hmm. end up in 2013. Now it's mm -hmm. 2020. They got another 10 years to go, mm -hmm. right? To establish something based on the roadmap. Got it, got it. Right? So when we knew that, we had the opportunity to visit uh, companies, uh, mm -hmm. CTEC company, CTEC company in Chengdu, a state owned company. We saw a significant achievement within five years. For example, they have something like UTM, mm -hmm. a main traffic management, where they manufacture the thing and being utilized by the whole country of China. Got it. And they manufacture the biggest veto in the world. Got it, got it. You see? Okay. Right? And then when we went to uh, Australia in Gold Coast, uh, we saw a company known as Throne Technology who manufacture, it's not actually manufacturing, you're actually employing of DJI drones, re-engineer of DJI drones, innovate the things, and they use the drone for the purpose of surveillance during the Commonwealth Games in 2018. Got it. Which was held in, in, uh, in Gold Coast. Got it, got it. No, the thing is this, so no. By having a something, uh, a plan, okay. that stimulate the, all those processes, that you have an overview, a, a clear insight on the way forwards of developing drones. Okay, okay so I'm, I'm going to stop you there for a while. Yeah. I think we will have further discussion on that. Uh, but maybe on top of that, I would like to mention to everyone who is listening today, so those kind of uh, programs, framework, initiative, so those are the kind of things that you know agencies like us uh, might, for example, Futurize, uh, TPM, Magic, 
So one of the reasons we are trying to get everyone together, to come together you know, from various uh, associations, industry players, uh, universities, industry partners, to, is to actually help us to come up with certain recommendations to be able for us to come up with and then further push that into uh, up to a certain uh, platform which is currently available and hopefully uh, the, the government would, would uh, take that consideration seriously uh, because it is not just uh, a recommendation by a certain specific groups. So this, this recommendation would be something that is uh, 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 recommended by everyone in the ecosystem and then uh, validated by them before we push that paper forward. And uh, I want to go to, to Izwan. So, because uh, I, I want to test and see whatever that we're building here to see if this actually meets international standard. You know, because Izuan have been uh, traveling all over the world uh, and, and doing business in terms of drone technology and, and a lot of other things. And, and when, we, when you build and, and bring Terra Drone uh, as a partner in Malaysia, well, how, what is your plan and how do you think you want to add value to the ecosystem and get them to think global. This one? Yeah, thank, thank you, Farhan, for, for the floor. Uh, first of all, before I go into the question that you asked just now, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to actually register uh, our appreciation from mm -hmm. the Radon Group to TPM and MDEC for having us here today. Uh, so I believe this is the second program that we have we, we are having together. Uh, the first program being the Terra Drone Tech Day uh, back in September 9th this year, mm -hmm. uh, 09, 09, 2020. So thank you very much for TPM and MDEC uh, for becoming our strategic partner and also co-organizers for, for the event. I believe it, uh, it went successful. Uh, it was a success and uh, we managed to bring, uh, I mean, to impart lots of knowledge about drones and our technology that we have globally uh, and uh, introduce that to the client here in Malaysia. So going back to your question, Farhan, uh, in terms of the uh, global experience and so on, uh, Alhamdulillah, on a personal note, before I go on the professional note, uh, for the last 20 years of employment, uh, I have the privilege of uh, involving in drone and AI for the last three years uh, under three different companies. Uh, so two of them are well-known companies, uh, one of them here in Malaysia uh, with offices all over the world. And also another company was in Singapore, and I had the privilege to work with them as well before I uh, incorporated another company related to AI. So Terra Drone Technology Malaysia's member heart is the newest, and I can say the smallest uh, drone company when it comes to enterprise level in Malaysia. We are the smallest and the newest. Uh, reason being I'm saying that because we just been incorporated this year on 24th February 2020. Uh, the majority shareholder belongs to the Terra, uh, Terra Drone Corporation of Japan, uh, while the remaining shareholders are under my own personal capacity. So in terms of the last three years that I've been uh, in the ecosystem of drones, uh, mainly in Europe, I was there for almost one year. Uh, and also recently here in Malaysia, uh, sorry, in, sorry uh, in Europe for one year, and then in uh, Singapore for almost six months, and now here in Malaysia. So actually, I know more about EASA and also the European standard. So coming back to your question, um, in terms of the global or the what we have here, I mean, is it suitable and also ready to go global? Uh, to be honest, uh, we here in Malaysia, we have the capability to go further. Uh, for example, when I brought in Terra Drone here into Malaysia, my main objectives was only two. First, to bring the Terra Drone global technology uh, here to Malaysia because uh, uh, when I explore on their capabilities, I found out that they have uh, lots of technology that are not available here yet in Malaysia. Uh, we are in 15 countries. We have 15 physical offices worldwide, uh, be it in manufacturing, software houses, or even drone service provider. But in terms of penetration, we have businesses in almost 60 countries globally. So my main idea initially was to bring their technology, the Terra Drones technology to Malaysia and promote it here to the clients and so on. And the second objective of Terra Drone Malaysia is actually to collaborate uh, rather than compete with all the drone players, DSP, uh, government agencies and so on. Because uh, being 60% owned by foreigners, uh, by Terra Drone Corporation of Japan, 
we are which we are by virtue are known as a foreign company it's not really local company although we are sendia merhat so the main idea initially was to bring the technologies global technology here to malaysia but uh, for the last six months uh, especially during the terra drone tech day when i met with lots of the drone players here in malaysia we found out that there are lots of technologies that are very uh, what we call uh, market ready from Malaysian companies to be promoted outside. Great. So, Great. for example, our friend here, Mr. Ismail from Palsa, they are <laughs> doing extensively on the hydrogen, where we believe is uh, also a good uh, market also, or there are potential for future uh, usability uh, yes. in the market. So, of course, there are a few other companies that we found out very interesting. And uh, in fact, we are in talk, we in talk with some of them. Uh, to bring their technology, the Malaysian-made technologies, globally through mm -hmm. our sister's company uh, in this 15, in this uh, uh, another 14 countries. Uh, so we are in talk with some of them. Uh, even we have signed NDA and MOU with a few of them uh, in promoting their technology. So in terms, in terms of this collaboration, uh, this is also where uh, we are true, sticking true to our philosophy of uh, collaboration. Whereby, if there are already, already technology available here in Malaysia, Terra Drone Technology Malaysia does not want to actually recreate the wheel. We just would like to collaborate and work together and use the technology available or even promote it outside, as, as I mentioned just now. So, yeah, uh, in a nutshell, I believe there are certain technologies, drone technologies, be it hardware or software, here in Malaysia, developed and also deployed by our own Malaysian that are already available and ready to be promoted globally. Great, great, great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Izwan, for the, for the sharing. And I think uh, I want to go directly to, to uh, Izmi, uh, you know, trying to build, uh, as, as Izwan said, you know, you've got really good products, and you've got uh, you know, this hydrogen uh, third generation. So RMK12 you know, is coming up next year. Now, I know that uh, a lot of other agencies, such as uh, Dino Malaysia, is supporting you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I would like to know. Uh, so if if the, if the government is asking for recommendations for industry players such as yourself, you know, for the next five years, 2021 to 2025, you know, to take your specific product further, you know, what kind of intervention, what kind of incentives do you think the the government should uh, put in, put in place, be it, uh, programs or policy? You know, uh, to to help uh, industry players like you scale up your current technology, you know, uh, and, and and be able to sell this globally. Well, what is your take on that? Uh, okay, I uh, just want to thank uh, Iswan also for pointing out about our company uh, as a potential that we can work together, and also yeah, thanks for the comments. Uh, in terms of my view on this, uh, I know that uh, Maida and Miti, they have been supporting uh, the aerospace industry, but mainly through the MRO, maintenance, repair and overhaul sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, if they could look similar model uh, into manufacturing, uh, but not so much of a, uh, aviation manufacturing, but more of a drone manufacturing, um, similar model, where there's a tax incentive uh, on drone manufacturing and development. Um, there's uh, because drone is a bit uh, broad in terms of uh, technologies because you have uh, things from software, hardware, firmware, mm -hmm. materials, uh, power systems, and so on. Um, it's an entire ecosystem, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's a small product per se, but it, the ecosystem is far much larger than uh, the commercial airlines uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, small components. So if we can work together, I think there's one uh, sub-agency under BT, uh, which is NICO. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, probably they can start looking into getting drone as a serious uh, partner or serious sector uh, within the National Aerospace Blueprint uh, alongside with the coexisting uh, industry of MRO. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, if they can look into that, that will be great. Within these five years, uh, I think RMK12, uh, they are looking into one billion uh, investment in uh, aerospace, but hopefully it's been spread out into drones as well, instead of just MRO alone. Got it, got uh, it. Uh, that, that would actually spur a lot of industries because the drone technology can 
uh, also spill over to other sectors like agriculture, uh, fertilizations, uh, uh, fisheries, uh, national security, surveillance, and so on. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, in the ESCOM uh, Eastern Sabah Security Commission, uh, they have been subscribing to uh, scan eagle UAVs from Boeing. Um, if this kind of uh, privileges exist here, I think in the next five years, we could have our own drone roaming the uh, Borneo states uh, for surveillance, um, helping fishermen uh, to uh, look into fishery sectors uh, and alternative to satellites uh, and border control reconnaissance, uh, agriculture mapping in a large area. I think these are all the gaps uh, with that kind of support from government uh, because uh, at the moment also, uh, we've been supported by a uh, couple of agencies, uh, Nano Malaysia being one of them. Uh, they, they've been helping a lot. They also help us to validate the technology as well in terms of nanotechnology. So we are headed towards a nano verified product. Uh, so uh, if this entire ecosystem comes uh, uh, as like a blueprint, which I think in the first place, the Malaysian Aerospace Council had laid this down, but in the sense of MRO and mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing, yes. uh, we can uh, uh, get an, a parallel line to it, which includes drone as well. Yes. Uh, I think I think that that should be the way forward. Yeah. To my uh, sure. be, but before you go, you know, I, I was just thinking, you know, if we are to compare, you know, how mm. the the Malaysian government has planned the development of the aerospace uh, industry. So if mm -hmm. we were to 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 do the same to to drones, for example, uh, because yeah. you know, build the the whole uh, aeroplane, you know, we get the technology and build the engine, for example. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. similarly. Do you think we, for example, you are you are building your own uh, helium uh, battery, you know, or, or and, and if there are other drone companies or drone technology uh, companies that is building uh, a peripheral drone technology such as uh, telecommunication devices or mm -hmm. the chipset, for example, right. how can Malaysia position itself, you know, s such as that, you know, because at the end of the day, these are the equipments. These are the, 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 the instruments that could be used for to be sold to other uh, drone companies out there that has a bigger market uh, market value, you know, like the, the DJI's, the Skydio. How can we create a product to be uh, sell, sold to them instead? Yeah, OK, uh, I think I understand the point. Uh, so what I think uh, in this case, in this regards, if you want to make Malaysian made drones, uh, for a start, probably we will take it gradually. Uh, mm -hmm. So we will look into core technologies that we develop and uh, manufacture locally while using uh, other subcomponents from overseas first. Uh, until we can get a buyer for the other components that we want to make in a spin off. Uh, and then uh, only we can go significantly into that. Uh, okay, I'll give you one example. Uh, like for our hydrogen technology, uh, we not only use in drones, we also use in other things as well, like uh, uh, electric vehicle, uh, like uh, uh, electrical power genset generator, mm -hmm. uh, and other things, in, including satellites. Mm -hmm. So we can hit many birds with one stone. Uh, indirectly, we are already a vendor of a hydrogen powered uh, fuel cell solution for the market. So uh, if a particular supplier or company wanted to be a supplier of a component to a drone manufacturer, uh, they should look into diversifying their business model that they can generate a multiple revenue stream from one single technology, one single product. Mm -hmm. Uh, so with that, we can eventually see an entire ecosystem of drone manufacturer of components and systems in Malaysia itself. Uh, so they they have to look into diversifying that uh, revenue stream for one technology. Uh, that I think the agencies, the government agencies, really can help in that aspect to push for uh, pre-com and commercialization and expanding the technology. Uh, okay. Like you were mentioning, for example, the communications. I think communications besides drones are uh, also used for IoT solutions exactly. in, in, in other sectors. So if they can specialize in that comms load, so not just the comms uh, per se, but uh, whatever firmware and software goes along with the comms uh, itself, package product that can cross different sectors. 
Uh, same goes with, for example, composite manufacturing. I believe there's a lot of uh, companies that work on composites. But uh, maybe if they can find a unique selling point that will give value add for drone, for example, you can make composite structure at the same time being a structural battery. So a composite structure that acts as a battery at the same time. That can cross uh, sectors. It can uh, not only for drone, for other uh, industry as well. So if they can find that unique selling point within their technology or their product, I think they can be very sustainable, not be squashed by giants from overseas. Uh, big uh, nations with already long track record because we cannot afford uh, to compete with them. So what we do is we find our niche area, niche point that is quite universal. So I think that's that's the take, uh, that's the way to go. Got it, got it. Thank you so much, Ismail. I think before uh, I, I, I go to Dato uh, asking for Muda's wish list, uh, I would like to go back to Izwan because you said that uh, you've been around uh, across the globe. I would like to know, because currently we are trying to build our own uh, drone ecosystem in Malaysia. So based on the countries that you have been to, how are the drone ecosystems there? Do, do they have, you know, at this point of time, of course, we are still building. You know, for the past one year, you know, we have like over 80 companies in the ecosystem, with regulators, with funding agencies, with uh, technology uh, providers. But globally, how, how, how does their ecosystem look like? How do they work together? Yeah, in terms, I mean, if you are talking about the hardware side of it, uh, the physical structure of it, I mean, of course, uh, countries like China, Japan, Europe, and US are well advanced compared to us. Um, take, for example, uh, in terms of uh, China, I mean, all of us know DJI and so on. So they have been there. I mean, they are not the, they are not the oldest drone company in the world. They were I mean, incorporated only just a few years back, but now they are number one in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of that kind of readiness, of course, we still have lots to catch up. Uh, but one interesting point that I found uh, very valuable, uh, especially when I was uh, in Europe, uh, was that actually we have the niche in terms of manpower capabilities and also expertise. So this is where, uh, when I, I was there in Europe, uh, when I brought our Malaysian UAV pilots to perform the works in Europe, I found out that actually in most of the time, I mean, comparable, yes, no doubt about that. Our pilots are more are comparable to the European guys. Although, for example, we have like Skyhawk, uh, sorry, Cyberhawk or Sky Futures, who have been in businesses for, what, I mean, 2008, 2005, they have been in businesses for, for quite some time. But our pilots are equally comparable to them. But in most of the time, actually, we are much better. So this is where I found out in terms of human capital, we have the niche uh, compared to the European side. Of course, in terms of salary and so on, we are, again, more competitive. Uh, but now EU are more strict when it comes to work permit and so on. So you must be coming up with work, proper work permit or uh, full-time employment there. So it, it means that if Malaysian pilots are going to be employed there, they must be under the payroll based on the minimum or based on the standard uh, salary. So this is where I think we should also look into exporting globally. I know for, for the Penjana, for example, uh, the recent program by the government, Penjana, they are having lots of uh, training, um, introduction to drones. And I know some of our friends, Aeronerve, uh, Asia Drone IoT and so on, are doing courses for, for, for them under this penjana. So it's a, I, I believe it's a step into the right direction. Uh, we can start grooming new mm. pilot for, for export. Of course, uh, we also have lots of pilot, seasoned pilots, experienced pilot who are already, already there. Uh, and this is where actually we have a better strength compared to other countries. Uh, but the downside of it, I'm not trying to pinpoint and uh, pick fingers to anybody. Um, I take example. I'm talking about from the Terra Drone point of view. So uh, Terra Drone, we are in 15 countries, as I mentioned before. Uh, we are number one in the world, but it doesn't really matter because for us the ranking can change anytime. Uh, but in terms of footprint in Asia or even in uh, in the world, Malaysia is the latest or the newest office, and we are the smallest. Uh, but Terra Drone saw the potential. Although we are small compared compared comparable to Indonesia, which we also have two offices there. Um, Indonesia is big, Thailand is big, uh, Philippines is big, 
So most of the countries are bigger than Malaysia here in Asia, in Southeast Asia, but we are bigger than Singapore. Mm -hmm. Definitely much bigger than Singapore. However, they have this, the Singaporean, they have a little bit advantage compared to us because their certification by their, by their CAAS, Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore, are well, uh, what we call, uh, accepted in most of the countries globally. So when I was in Europe, for example, if I have my pilots certified by CAAS or by CASA, uh, uh, Civil Authority of Safety, uh, Civil Aviation and Safety Authority of Australia, I can get the pilots into the what we call the employment or into the workforce in Europe much easier compared to pilots from Malaysia who does not have any certification. So this is where I believe if we can tighten up, we can if we can improve and we can get some kind of uh, uh, what we call uh, credential certification, for example, from CAAM and so on. I think that will be a very good definitely, market definitely, for us. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I mean, this is again, uh, I, I think in terms of hard hardware and so on, we have many players that can go global, can be big, like Pulsar, for example. Uh, but one aspect that I believe we should also concentrate is the human capital. We need to start exporting our pilot globally. Got it, got it. Thank you so much, Izwan, uh, for, for, for the explanation and for, for, for the recommendation and sharing as well. And I think that there are still a lot of room for us to grow which is why I think we need everyone's input into this and, and we need to build this industry together. We've, we've got three minutes left, so I'm going to give one minute each to everyone to share your wish list and what is the vision, you know, in 2025. How do you see drone tech in Malaysia? Nato. Thank you, Wan. Now, in, in a way that I, I, I wish to relate to your questions, Wan, uh, uh, there are three pertinence. Uh, point be raised up by, by our panels, uh, mm -hmm. it's May and it's one. Uh, when when, when they, 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 the, the methods on the reinvent the wheel, multi-functions, capability, right? And also collaborations. Mm -hmm. So these are these are the three important things when we look into uh, drone development in future. Mm -hmm. Right? But I mean, achieving something towards 2025, what we aspire to see, there must be a plan, right? Before we talk about the wish list, uh, I, I'm still wondering, uh, perhaps if there is a lead agency can share with us in terms of there is a plan at the strategic level, you know, like other countries are be able to come up with what they call it a roadmap or strategic map for 20 or 25 years. Got it's it. like US military, they started in 2005. Mm -hmm. So if we are be able to share this sort of uh, roadmap as a strategic guidance for all drone industry players. Got it, got it. Right? Then we are be able to visualize what's going to happen in 2025. Exactly, exactly. Right? You know, in, in my perspective, I see there are, I mean, the keyword is always capabilities that you need to develop mm -hmm. in all applications, in all tasks and missions. Because mm -hmm. when we talk to a meeting guy like me, I'm, talk, I'm, I'm looking at missions, mm -hmm. right? Now, you look at the commercial application there, there are a Endless. lot. Uh, even in military, there are 16 applications there. Mm -hmm. But where are the capabilities being required? by all the users that can be potentially fulfilled by the drones. Got it, got it. I think... By the drones. Exactly, exactly. So these are very important elements. Okay, number two, capability that need to be developed towards the user requirements. Whether is it viable or not? not. Talent development. Right? Whether is it viable or not? By 2025, can we assess this sort of capability? I'll give you an example now. Others. Argus, I mean, invented something like 1.8 gigabyte thermal resolutions at 20,000 feet. It is be able to see a small child lost on the street. You see, that cover 25 square kilometer, which is bigger than, I mean, where I stay in the Mansara area. Are we accept to that kind of thing? Uh, uh, I need to keep talking about reality. Can we afford that thing? But the good news is that, as what one said, by 2025, maybe it is viable because when we look at the technological advancements of drone, 
then in terms of cost, it's relatively cheap. Exactly, exactly. Right? So to aspire something, uh, it's all bounds to whether we are be able to do a strategic plan at this moment or not. Exactly. To see what happened in 2025. Got it. But on New Delhi perspective, as a Malaysian citizen, you see, what I aspire to see, a landscape that we build from now on, with the integrations of dynamic organization comprised of government sector, government agency, corporate sectors, academicians, NGO like us, that can work together, that can share. At the end of the day, the day is, we are talking about sharing is caring. So this is the point that raised up by, by uh, our panel just now. It's a million, yeah, yeah, that need to be expound and that need to be based on further. Because these are very important elements and what you said, like, if you have something, share. Got Don't invent the wheel. Got it. Collaborate. Right? And now we are looking at the features, the capabilities of the drones can do a multifunction kind of thing. Let's optimize it. Got it. Okay. At the end of the day, you will be able to see a value en enhancement with the cost reductions that can fulfill the user requirements. Exactly. All right. I think before I, I summarize what Dato uh, shared, I think I, I, want, I want to get a few seconds from Izmay and Izwan. So 2025, Izmay, uh, will we be able to see a drone uh, flying over your office in you know, wherever you're at, you know, is one, is, do you think a drone delivery is going to happen within the next five years? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I, th I think uh, drone is inevitable, uh, we like it or not. Uh, so we have to be prepared for it. Uh, and then secondly is I think uh, we have to also understand the notion that eventually the world will move towards autonomous, uh, whereby uh, human jobs will be taken away. Um, so we have to be prepared for that. Uh, for example, later on, subsequently, I think even drones will be self-flying. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're already talking about self-driving cars on, on the road level three, level four, level five, uh, with AI coming in. Uh, eventually, uh, AI will take over drones. Uh, in terms of uh, us, Malaysian, having sustainable Malaysian-made drones uh, for global market, uh, I think that is quite a challenge because like uh, just now um, uh, Dr. General also mentioned, uh, Izuan also mentioned, there's a lot of regular, regulatory uh, terrain, uh, issues that we need to resolve. Uh, certifying an aircraft is not straightforward, um, especially if we want to sell it to state-owned uh, operators, uh, SAO. Um, uh, and then uh, we want to uh, put in for military use and all that, uh, of course, there's bodies like DGTA. Uh, so you need to be certifying all this process. So if um, government agencies can assist and uh, accommodate for that process to be like fast track, bite-sized process, uh, I think uh, it can actually boost Malaysia uh, to achieve the 2035 target to have at least our Malaysian uh, products going out global. I know there's a company called USD uh, based uh, under CTRM, uh, based in Batu Bernam, Melaka. They've been making uh, big drones like Aludra and uh, a lot of other drones uh, that are certified by regulatory bodies. Uh, but they are targeting uh, much on the military market. Where else on the uh, civilian market, uh, consumer market, uh, it's where these other drone players in Malaysia uh, we are actually trying to connect the dots and what is missing here is certification. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, we build a drone, we go to Sirim, say, uh, hello, Sirim, can you certify a drone for us? They said they can certify building block components, but not the entire drone. Mm -hmm. So if we can pull our resources together, both government, private, industry, all exactly. together, exactly. universities as well, probably take one of the certification ag agency like Sirim, Straight to the point, uh, steering will put out all the standards and then we can just send in for certification. Boom, we will have a certified product, of course, with the help of people like CAM and uh, other agencies as well. Got so it. I think if we can do this ASAP within this two, three years, we will definitely it's see... Two, three months. Two, three months. <laughs> yeah, yes, wait, two, three months. Yeah. So, yeah. so we definitely would be able to see... Uh, Proudly made in Malaysia drones uh, ready for global market. All right, all right. Thank you, Izwan. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think Izmir uh, already sum up most of the thing that I would like to say. So he took out the spot for me. So uh, <laughs> I can watch what he said. Uh, but uh, just 
just a small uh, uh, input from there. Uh, in terms of, uh, I mean, as I mentioned during the Teradron Tech Day, I think uh, maybe Farhan, you can recall what I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe most of the technologies are already available. Uh, I mean, of course, the cost or the price, uh, the price tag, as uh, Datu was saying just now, I mean, the cost quite is uh, quite high. But over time, the cost will be cheaper and cheaper, and it will be economical. The mm -hmm. economy of scale will be there. So. I strongly believe, Terra Drone strongly believe that most of the technologies are already there. We just need to nurture the technology. We need just to do more R&D or uh, full deployment on this. Uh, but other than that, like the regulatory and so on, I believe Ismail already sum up in detail about that. Um, but uh, also to add another point on that, uh, this is where uh, in terms of uh, manpower, as I mentioned just now about the pilots and so on, uh, it's good if we, have, if we have a certification, proper certification for the pilots. Although we are going towards autonomous, but we still need some kind of human supervision, human assistance or human intervention at certain, uh, at certain level. So this is where the knowledge and the certification will be very helpful. And secondly, my wish list will be is that to have a proper uh, centralized training centers, development centers. So I'm very humble and very happy and very proud uh, to be part of uh, Technology Park Malaysia's TPM's uh, initiative, uh, both me personally and also Terra Drone. We are part of the TPM's uh, task force of uh, uh, what we call uh, make, it, make, make a realization of the drone development center or drone development zone here in TPM. So I believe this kind of center, one-stop center that cater for the design, manufacturing, MRO, testing, and also uh, all the certification will be helpful to spur the development of drone industries in Malaysia and also for the surrounding region. Yeah, I think that's all for me. Got it. Got it. Thank you so much, Izwan. Uh, thank you so much for all, all the panels that we have today. And before we go, uh, from from my side, you know, my there are a few wish lists that I also have uh, from 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 MDEC side, you know, and personally for me, so I'm I'm building this uh, drone tech initiative uh, within MDEC, you know, within 2025. You know, some of the things that we envision is that first of all, uh, we want to ensure that the adoption rate of drone in various uh, drone sectors in Malaysia to at least cover 50% of the actual uh, sector. You know, for example, in agriculture, we have 600,000 over hectares. So in 2025, imagine if 50% of that land is currently using drones to do spraying. But that is one thing. So another vision uh, that, we, that we would like to achieve is you know, the numbers of jobs creation you know, within this 20, by from now until 2025. So actually in 2020, because of the penjana, the number, uh, the number of people trained in drone-related trainings is already close to 4,000 for information, not yep. yet reach uh, 20, uh, 2021. And we would like you know, to gather all the companies, create new companies to be able to create at least 10,000 jobs locally in Malaysia within drone industry. You know? and, and for your information, uh, on the 27th of November, this Friday, so we will be hosting together with Mike a My uh, Drone Tech Roundtable, which we are going to further discuss what are the recommendations from the public, from the industry players, so that we could build that proposed framework and try to highlight that you know, up to whatever government platform that is currently available and push this agenda together. And if you have further inquiries, do drop your comments on YouTube. Uh, we will be engaging with you further to assist you to understand better how we, are, we can work together with various stakeholders and to ensure you know, the, the drone tech ecosystem will further strengthen Malaysia's position and make Malaysia as the drone tech epicenter and launch pad to ASEAN. So thank you so much, uh, Nato, uh, Izwan, Izmay. Uh, thank right, you. Uh, and everyone at home, thank you so, so much for tuning in with us today. I think that's all from me. Uh, I'm Farhan again from MDEX Drone Tech and Fourth IR Ecosystem. Signing off. Assalamualaikum and goodbye.